Let's turn this trailer into a rocket ship micro camper. I'm not gonna waste any time, I'm just gonna get right to it. There were a couple reasons to go with a PVC water tank. I am comfortable working with PVC. I like how the weight could be evenly dispersed over the deck and kept at a height that a low center of gravity would help with the handling. I also thought that I could get a large volume of water without interfering with the cargo space. And it was cheap. With the U-shape of the PVC tank, I had storage in between that would come in handy later. The camper was largely plumbed using hardware store components, just like a real home. We're about to come up the uh, two inch pipe here it seems. Yep, here we go, right up the two inch. So with that, you can see that it took 22 and three quarter gallons. Now if I come down here, put the camera up and go, see the water there, 22 and three quarter gallons. Here I'm adding blocks to support the edge of the plywood. 
doing it over, I would have raised the lower rail a bit. I ripped down one by fours to get the lumber for the cabinets. It was cheaper to do it that way.
Mounting the interior paneling was incredibly difficult. The plywood fought to straighten up with every chance it got. There were many failures while forcing it into place. I didn't bother to film them all. Due to the many adjustments needed to mount the paneling, I didn't glue it first. I went back and soaked the boards in glue afterwards. It seemed to work well. I didn't feel much of the installation of the LED lights or the insulation. Here's a few pictures and clips of the lights and insulation. The lights wrap the entire body. I also drilled a crazy amount of holes in the interior paneling for the LED lights to shine through representing stars.
In an ultra moment of disappointment, I realized a clearance issue when making the fenders. This board was too close to the tire once mounted. I had to use axle blocks to raise the camper. It was an expensive error, yet exactly the type of oversight expected on a custom project. This is our door. This door, I'm literally going one board at a time. I look at it, I think about it. I don't know how it's going to turn out. This is going to be like a basic frame. I'm just going to keep adding things slowly and carefully until we have a working ceiling door. I'm not worried about overbuilding it. It can be a little heavy if it has to be, just as long as it works. This is all the invention process. I tried five different weather seals. This skinny rib one from Home Depot worked the best to waterproof the door. There were many failed attempts, not worth including.
Without seeing it coming, the idea to use a round folding table to cover the rear of the camper just popped in my head during the build. I bought a five foot round one. The white wall you're seeing is a failed attempt to use a polystyrene sheet on the rear. I used 3M spray glue that did not adhere enough to the plywood to be effective. I later removed the polystyrene and adapted to another way of finishing the rear. Just making sure that all the stuff is uh, really sealed up good. We're going to do inside and outside on this cone. This stuff is super sticky. So I made this little star out of a piece of sheet metal, just kind of traced it out and then cut it and bent the edges here. Both side fins were made in this fashion. The top fin was made to be removable and built a little differently out of the same material. To prep the galvanized metal for paint, I used a basic crud cutter cleaner and then followed it up with this concrete and metal prep by Clean Strip. It began raining and lasted a couple days. 
After this coat of primer, I worked on other things until the rain passed. Once the humidity reached painting levels, I applied a second coat of primer, then three top coats. I didn't film the paint as I didn't want my camera coated in paint and it plainly took a long time. The furniture sliders were used as landing pucks for the door. They will contact the ground and keep the door from being damaged. This camper will be powered by a Blue Eddy AC200P. Instead of hardwiring the camper, I chose this for its ability to take camping and to power my home's appliances during a power outage. Here I use the metal locking channel of a door threshold strip. I bent it backwards to use it as an attachment point for the rear rubber seal. I'm using a sticky backed foam quarter inch for this part in case you like wake up you won't if you bump your head you'll only be hitting the foam. I've already peeled the back off. For the front storage area I wanted to do something inspired by space. 
I checked out a few pictures of what it looks like to fly through space and came up with this. I didn't film the installation of the black fabric. It wasn't a good camera angle and it was too dark. Here I'm finishing up the air conditioner vent. The screen will help keep the animals out. Toward the end of the project, I was constantly working on small finishing touches and jumped around quite a bit. Painting, trim, touch up, just whatever was needed. I've added a little bit of uh, kind of abstract art here. I want this to kind of very, very loosely look like a portal. I painted it black and haven't yet decided if it should need other colors. To lock the door and make a tight seal, these two knobs can be installed inside or through the window from the outside. I couldn't think of a better, cleaner looking lock mechanism, maybe one day in the future. For now it works great and is only a minor inconvenience. Earlier I made these metal plates as catches for the knobs. How to make it work properly came to me slowly. This is a small half door to hide the utilities. The build took 108 days. I couldn't be happier or more surprised with it. I pulled it to my mom's to show her and it pulled great. 
We can't wait to take it camping in the spring. Hang on for just a second though. There's one more trick of this camper I wanted to show you. Let's have a look. If you enjoyed this build and I've brought you some entertainment, please consider subscribing and sharing the video. I'd greatly appreciate a like and a comment, and especially a comment suggesting what I could build next. It would be my pleasure to keep the building ball rolling, inspired by your support. I love this stuff. Thank you so much for checking out the video.